hello students today we are going to study when bridge this bridge is very very important to measure unknown value of inductance here you can see the diagram is given for the when bridge circuit right in the first term you can see one resistance r1 one inductance l1 is there in the second arm we have r2 similarly in the third arm we have only a pure resistance r3 and here in uh, the fourth term we have a parallel branch that consists of r4 that is a pure resistance and a standard variable capacitance that is c4 right so this is our bridge known as when bridge here r1 and l1 are unknown r2 is known pure resistance r3 also known pure resistance and as i told c4 the standard variable capacitance whose value is also known and there is a provision so that we can vary this capacitance value and there is another uh, known value uh, resistance and that is denoted by r4 and that is also variable in nature so this is the wind bridge circuit in this type of bridge normally we can use a detector which can be galvanometer detector which can be a telephone detector so this is the circuit now we know that as this bridge has four arms so for the first arm the equivalent impedance is this r1 plus j omega l1 for the second arm that is for this the impedance value is r2 for third one it is r3 and the fourth one as it is the parallel combination of r4 and c4 that is the variable capacitor so this is the equivalent impedance for arm number four or fourth arm now by varying the c4 and r4 we can achieve the balance condition and from our basic concept about ac bridges we can say that under the bridge balance condition when the bridge is in the balance condition then the product of z1 and z4 and z2 and z3 they are equal basically these are the expression what we achieve from the bridge balance condition so after replacing the value of z1 z4 in this equation and in the right hand side by replacing the expression for z2 and z3 we get this now by simplifying this expression simplifying this expression we can have this expression also further and by equating the real part and the imaginary part for both for left and right hand side we get the expression for the unknown resistance that is r1 and which is in terms of r2 r3 and r4 if r2 and r3 and r4 are known in the present case they are known we can then we can easily find out the value of r1 so this is to find the unknown resistive value for the arm number one in the similar way by equating the left and right hand side for uh, this equation for this equation we can easily find out the uh, unknown inductance value and that is this l1 which is the unknown inductance value and which is equals to the product of uh, c4 r2 and r3 in this in the present case these values are uh, known to us that is the value for c4 r2 and r3 and uh, by this way you can easily find out the unknown value of resistance r1 and l1 that is the basic target of the wind bridge next very very important part that is the phasor diagram how we can draw the phasor diagram of the wind bridge this is the phasor diagram of the wind bridge as we have drawn now it is very clear from this diagram that in the reference axis or along x axis we have already drawn these two parameters i1 and i2 now again going back to the bridge circuit we can see branch or arm number 1 and arm number 2 are connected in series with each other so the current which will pass through the arm number 1 the same current further will go through the arm number 2 
so in that regard i1 that is the current for the first arm and the current for the second arm they are equal to each other and from that concept from that concept i1 is equals to i2 here it is written so they are the i1 and i2 both of them are taken as the reference now it is also clear from this picture that uh, this voltage v2 is also with the same axis of i1 and i2 why because we can see again going to the bridge circuit we can see that v2 is the voltage across the arm number 2 and uh, the x as this is the voltage across the resistive branch so v2 will be equal to i2 into r2 the resistive voltage drop and we know that the resistive voltage drop and the corresponding resistive current always are in the same phase so from that concept we can draw v2 with the same phase of i2 further it is also clear to us that v2 and v4 they are equal under bridge balance condition so we can easily write v2 is equals to v4 and further v4 is equals to the product of i2 and r2 which is equals to ir into r4 and further which is equals to ic into 1 upon omega c4 because here why we have written this to ir r4 c from the bridge circuit is clear that this r4 and c4 they are making a parallel combination and we know that in the parallel path the voltages are equal across the parallel path so in that uh, regard or in that sense the voltage across the c4 that is uh, ic into 1 upon omega c4 which is equals to the voltage across the variable resistance r4 and which is equals to ir into r4 so it is clearly written here ir into r4 which is equals to ic into 1 upon omega c4 that is the capacitive voltage drop for the parallel circuit for the fourth arm so in this way we can draw or we can portray v2 and v4 now again ir is drawn in with the same phase of v2 and v4 why because in the circuit c v4 is the voltage across r4 and ir is the current through r4 again the same concept the resistive current and resistive voltage are in same phase so ir is drawn with the same phase with uh, this v4 so it is ir right okay and uh, again uh, i1 r1 what is i1 r1 i1 r1 is the resistive drop across the resistance r1 in uh, branch or arm number one so as it is the resistive drop so we can draw i1 r1 the same phase of v2 v4 i1 and i2 so it is our i1 and r1 now we can see this is uh, i4 and i3 and this is ir this is basically ir across x axis this is ic this is along y axis now we know that the vector sum of ir and ic is i4 so the vector sum of ic and the vector sum of ir is nothing but this i4 so i4 is drawn here again the amount of current which will pass through as i4 the same current also will pass through the third arm that is i3 so i3 and i4 are equal so it is also written here i4 and i3 they are equal to each other okay further what is i3 i3 is a resistive current and across the resistance r3 the voltage drop is v3 which is also resistive drop so in that sense v3 and i3 they must be in same phase and what is the expression of v3 v3 is equals to nothing but i3 into r3 so from that concept we have drawn this v3 this v3 with the same phase of i3 and we know that v3 is equals to i3 r3 and from the bridge balance condition we know that this v1 and v3 are equal under the balance condition so you can directly write v3 is equals to v1 so in that way we can get or we can mark v1 v3 as well as v2 and v4 and we know that from the diagram that the sum under the balance condition the summation of this v1 and v2 the vector sum of basically v1 and v2 is nothing but the supply voltage this is v similarly the vector sum of v3 and v4 is also 
nothing but the supply voltage this V so we have V1 V2 we have this V1 this V1 and V2 similarly we have V3 and V4 so from the concept of vector addition there is the paleogram law the parallel line to the vector which represents v1 and v3 is this this dotted line similarly the parallel line to the vector that represents v2 and v4 is this this dotted line so this is the paleogram and the diagonal of this paleogram is nothing but the resultant of v1 v2 or v3 and v4 and that is nothing but this v so hence this is the phasor diagram of when pitch